What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we're talking about photography investments. And I mean the things that we spend our money on that actually we will be very unlikely to look back on and think that wasn't a worthwhile investment. If you're growing your gear in photography, maybe you're starting out in photography, maybe you've been lucky enough to come into a little bit of cash and you're thinking, what should I buy? Let's be honest, sometimes there are things in photography that we buy that maybe we look back on and we think, did I really need that fourth flash? <laughs> did I really need to buy that fancy new item? And perhaps we maybe even regret it. But there are a few things that I'm gonna share with you today. And in fact, I found my top six things that I think if you invest your money in for photography, you will never ever look back and regret that decision. Because these are all things that I believe are great investments for photography. Before we get into all of that, I'm gonna ask you guys to do all the usual YouTube stuff for me. Make sure you hit that like button. It helps my video to be more successful. It helps my channel to be more successful. Really, really appreciate it. That's why I ask you to do it for every single video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Loads of other videos to come on my channel that I think you might enjoy. All right, no messing around. Let's get into this. What is the first item that I think is a top quality, top six investment for your photography? And number one, I thought I would start off small. Number one is this right here, that is good quality memory cards. So why memory cards? Well, a memory card is often something that is overlooked that will drastically change the performance of your camera. You guys who followed my channel will know that when I first got the Canon R6 and I did some testing with it, we got a few slower frame rates. And actually, when I then changed to the better memory cards, it was a massive, massive difference. In fact, I'm gonna link that video right here if you are interested in going and seeing what I mean. The difference in investment, the cheaper memory cards that I had, I think probably cost me something like 30 pounds. The more expensive memory card probably cost me more like 60 pounds, 70 pounds maybe. But that difference, that 30, 40 pounds difference has just transformed the performance of my camera. And that is really often the case. A lot of times I see on like forums and stuff, people talk about problems they're having, frame rates, buffering, stuff like that. And so often it's not the camera at all. It's the memory card that is causing the problem. So actually, if you're going to go out there and spend maybe a couple of thousand pounds or more on a camera, make sure you invest the extra 60, 70 quid to get a memory card that is going to help you get the best performance from that camera. You could talk about reliability and stuff as well. I think in reality, some of the more expensive memory cards still have the potential to go wrong or become corrupt. But, you know, look, a more solid, well-known brand, are they more likely to be reliable than perhaps a cheap, unknown brand that you might find on Amazon or eBay? I would say they probably are. You guys who are interested, I've got the Lexar Professional Memory Cards. I'll link it in the description if you want to go find them for yourself. So moving into item number two, the next best investment for photography for me was a computer, a good solid performing computer. Now I fairly recently got myself a new Lenovo ThinkPad. This is the laptop that I use uh, for most of my editing. I edit my videos on it as well and I use this pitch side at sports events. Such a worthwhile investment. There's a whole debate to be had about PC versus Apple. I, I know that personally. I'm a PC guy, I always have been, and that's why I've gone with PC. But there are plenty of people who will go with Apple and that's their preferred choice. Not gonna say that one is better than the other, although I know a load of you in the comments right now will be telling me that one is better than the other. But regardless of which one you go for, a good quality computer is going to transform your ability to edit your photos and get the best from your photos. Alongside the laptop, I've invested in the Adobe Editing Suite so I can use Lightroom, Photoshop, I also use Premiere Pro for my videos, After Effects, I get loads of stuff with it, but it's really, really useful. That software with a good performing computer means that I can get the best from my photos and videos, an investment which I haven't looked back on at all with any kind of regret. In fact, every day I'm using it, editing my photos, editing my videos, I, I think about how much better it is, how quicker the process is, and it overall just becomes more enjoyable to do. If you're lucky and you get a good spec laptop, it will last you for at least a few years, sometimes longer if you're lucky. Okay, so that is number two. Moving into number three, what do I think is the next best investment? And for me, that is 
good quality glass. And by that, I mean lenses. Now, the reason I've picked a lens, because look, someone else could argue for a camera, but for me, if we're talking investments, lenses really are just that. In pretty much every circumstance, a good quality lens will last you a lot longer than a good quality camera. I bought this lens back when I was using the 7D Mark II as my main camera. Since then, I've replaced that with the 1DX, and now I'm using the Canon R6, but this lens is still going strong. I've gone through three cameras and the lens is still there. Specifically, this is the Canon 24 to 70, uh, the Mark II, uh, it's the f2.8 version. When I bought it, uh, it certainly was an investment. I think it was about one and a half thousand pounds for this lens. But I use this for everything. I shoot a lot of my videos with it. I use this for all my sports work, for basketball. This is my main lens. I also use it for all my personal stuff. This lens has traveled the world with me. You guys who follow my Instagram, go check it out at Rob Sambles if you want to. Photos you'll see on there from Venice, the Grand canyon las vegas around the world all those photos taken with this lens you guys have seen here on my channel portrait photos that i took stuff like that again all with this lens this is such a go-to lens for me i use it pretty much every time i pull out my camera and although it was expensive at the time i did have to stretch my budget a bit to get hold of it i've never once looked back on it and regretted investing that money and i imagine i will still be using this for a good few years to come yet it works really well with my r6 i still love using using it fantastic lens really worth the money and worth the investment okay so what is next up well for me it was a really good quality camera bag and more specifically in this situation i'm talking about a backpack now the main backpack that i use is this right here this is my think tank street walker i think it's called the hard drive um version 2 i think it is again i'll link it in the description if you want to go have a look at it such a great backpack now i also have cheaper backpacks which i think are fantastic i've talked about those on this channel before the amazon basics bag is just over there um, i use the amazon basics roller bag really really good but when it comes to my backpack i wanted to get a really good quality backpack this is the bag that i use like every day for my photography stuff it's the bag that I travel with. I talked about how this lens has been around the world with me. This lens has been around the world in this backpack. It's comfortable, really good quality, really durable. I take it on aeroplanes. I've taken it out hiking. I've stuck it down in the mud, in the rain, in the dirt. It's got a rain cover. Really good backpack, such a good investment. And if I'm going to have sometimes a few thousand pounds worth of camera gear on me, well, actually, you know what? To spend another, I think, 175, maybe this was, for a good quality bag to put it in, it's worthwhile investment. It really, really is. I've already had this bag about two years. I've directly compared this with the uh, Low Pro Pro Tactic bag. I think I'll link that video right here. For me, this one was the winner. I imagine I'll still be using this for a good few years to come. Really worthwhile investment. A solid, good camera bag. Okay, in the same kind of category of carrying your gear, my next worthwhile investment is a decent camera strap. Now, I have used pretty much every different type of camera strap out there. You guys on this channel, you've seen me using cheaper straps, you've seen me using the branded Canon straps, you've seen me use like the spider holster thing on my think tank belt, and, and all of those are cool, but for me, the one that I've always come back to has been the kind of harness style uh, two cameras belt. And specifically I use the black rapid dual camera harness this is the one you can separate it so it can turn into just a single strap if you want to which is my kind of everyday strap that I use with my camera if I'm out and about shooting an event running to be mobile I'll put on the harness and I'll have two cameras on there now the black rapid harness is a little bit more money uh, than some of the cheaper ones that you can find on Amazon but with something like a camera strap there is a little bit of a case that you get what you pay for and the thing that I've noticed mostly is with the black rapid strap you get much better quality fixings the bit that goes into your camera the loop that then hangs uh, kind of on this carabiner the bit itself that then connects to the strap it is much more durable and much better quality and a little bit like i said with the camera bag if you're going to be hanging a two thousand pound camera and a one and a half thousand pound lens three and a half thousand pounds worth of camera and you're going to hang it on a little fixing like this on your camera strap 
Is it worth spending that little bit extra money to get the good quality? I would say it really, really is. Although at the time, I have to say, I think it's like a hundred something pounds. I was thinking at a hundred and whatever pounds for a camera strap. I really did begrudge spending that money, but actually I've never looked back on it and regretted it. Really good strap, really recommend this one. Again, I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. Good quality camera strap. I don't think you will regret investing your money in that. And item number six, last but not least, and I'm I'm afraid I'm hitting you with the boring one at the end and that is my insurance. I can hear people booing me in the comments but yep I've gone with insurance in my top six. Now is insurance is a funny one right? Every single month when you see that amount go out of your account on the direct debit you do think oh my insurance again but you know what there are two sides to it. First of all for me it's essential to do my job I have to have insurance for some of the different things that I do but second of all and for me most importantly is that peace of mind about my gear. I've got a good quality comprehensive policy and I know worst case scenario my gear gets damaged or maybe it gets stolen my insurance will cover me and insurance really is an investment because you're investing into it every single month unless you pay up front for your policy of course but I don't think you will regret it now touch wood you will never have to use it but if that day comes when you do need to use it you will not regret it for a second all those payments going out on your direct debit they will suddenly become really really valuable I'm unlucky enough to be somebody uh, who was the victim of car theft in the past my car got stolen and that car insurance that I had paid out for month after month for years beforehand which I begrudged paying every month I tell you what the day I had to use it to claim for my car that got stolen and I got a brand new car to replace it I didn't regret it at all. I look back on it and thinking oh, that that's why I pay it every month just in case that happens and the exact same would apply for my photography camera gear insurance. So there we have it guys, that is my top six investments. I really believe if you invest your money in any of those six things, I do not think you will look back and regret it in the future. They're all investments that hopefully will last you for a period of time, some longer than others, but some of those things will last you years. Really solid ways to spend your money in photography to get the best bang for your buck. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video.